scoop a de poop. Poop a de scoop. Scoop a de poop de poop. Hello, mother. This is Half Mental, the show that's 90% baseball and the other half mental. I'm Holt. And I'm Dan. Uh, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Happy kick ho- off. holidays. Happy holidays. Kick off to summer. It's hot. Uh, <laughs> it's hot here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're drinking my official beer of the summer, 2018. Modelo Chilada. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Whew. Much like we did the Diamondbacks of a few weeks ago, we owe the Brewers... Some yeah. pretty serious airtime. We do. And we actually have, I know we have a couple loyal viewers who are Brewers fans. That's true. So the Brewers are owners of the best record in the National League. They also lead their division by the most games in all of baseball. That happens so fast. I know. They're the most, I mean, they're the most dominant divisional team in baseball. That's crazy. Surprise. Yeah. Um, we should have talked about them a few weeks ago. Josh Hader is their sort of like... Multi-inning relief ace. Yeah, the fireman. Yeah. He, like three weeks ago, struck out eight in two and two-thirds innings. So he struck out the only eight guys he faced. That's crazy. And it's the only time that's ever happened. Oh, that's I didn't know that. Nobody had ever recorded eight strikeouts in less than three innings before. Dang. In a complete outing. Right. Um... And that's actually kind of par for the course. He pitches about two innings every time he pitches, and he strikes out two guys per innings. That's crazy. Um, that's a valuable tool to have. He's currently ranked like 15th in the National League in strikeouts, and he has pitched 31 innings. And he that's has, six, cr- he has 62 that's strikeouts. That's crazy. That yeah. just sunk in. So, I mean, he is, yeah, so he's with the starting pitchers and counting stats, despite right. having the innings pitched of a reliever, a heavily used reliever, but yeah. still. Uh, Josh Hader's doing great. It's really been pitching that's carried the Brewers, uh, which is surprising a little bit because they had a big off season with uh, getting Kristen Yelich and right. Uh, their outfield is, and yeah, their outfield's pretty stacked. Um, but Yelich has started hitting, hitting lately, and um, they're good. I mean, they're in as good a position as anybody. Yeah, good so job, half mental tip of the cap. Uh, so we didn't really mention last week that Robinson Cano has been suspended for 80 games. Yeah. Uh, Cano violated the performance-enhancing drug, uh, yeah. whatever, statute. Yep. Um, it was actually interesting. His was an interesting one. He failed to drug test in the off season, and had been appealing his suspension and then got hurt. And so it was like, oh, never mind, I'll serve my suspension now. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's like, there's still some funny business going right. on there. Supposedly they were unrelated. But, I mean that's it's not true, right? Exactly. I mean he's saying they're unrelated. He's he isn't he appealing his suspension? His suspension? No. Okay. So he accepted his suspension. He did appeal okay. it for a while. Okay. Okay. And then accepted it once he got injured, basically. And then we also have Wellington Castillo. Yeah. Who went down? But this leads to one of our our first mailbag. We had a lot of uh, a lot of viewer interaction this week. Cool. That's, um, that's exciting. Thanks to uh, Tanker. Not yeah. to be confused with T four R K. Oh, is that what that means? Yeah, take okay. it cool. <laughs> okay, so this is coming from a longtime loyal viewer and uh, interactor with the show. Okay, Edward D from <laughs> Tulsa, oh, Oklahoma. Edward D. Uh, so Edward writes, "What is more frustrating as a fan? PED use by players that don't really need to use them, Cano, D. Gordon, etc." Um, or PED users by players that are marginal and only with the benefit of drugs are occupying a roster spot or taking a shot away from another talent. And here he throws in Wellington Castillo, David Paulino, who got a ring with the Astros last year. And he says, or do you not care? Or are two-thirds of all professional athletes on HGH at this point and it's not worth thinking about? Well, and he said as a fan, right? Yeah. Because we can talk about it a lot later. As a fan, it's... It's tough. I mean, you want. I think I want to see an even playing field. I think everyone wants to see an even playing field. So, I think at some point it either needs to be like, here's what's allowed. Well, I guess that's. I mean, that's, that's where, we're where, we're where we're at. I mean, we're they at. allow exactly. Um, or we need to just say, all right, 
you guys can also use this. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like... Like, so there's a lot of assumptions built into that question, too. Like, the assumption is that Cano and, I mean, whoever, uh, A-Rod and the, the guys that we think would have been good without them, the right. assumption is that they would have been, or that they wouldn't have had nagging injuries, or they wouldn't have been a little slower every day game after a night game, or whatever. Yeah. And I think that's a big assumption. And I think it's also a big assumption that there's not a lot of AAA guys trying to sneak stuff through to become the next Wellington Castillo, you know? Oh, yeah. I sort mean, of a marginal Major League Baseball player. So that's why I started with, like, as a fan. Yeah. Because as a player... As a player, it would be... All, it would be you've got to think... Infuriating. Oh, yeah. It would be infuriating. But you also got to think, like, with the amount of money that Cano has made in his career... Yeah. I was talking about this at work the other day. Like, he doesn't have to worry about his, like, great, 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 great grandkids' yeah. tuition. You know? Like, right. is it worth being pop for 80 games? Right. I, yeah. You could put an argument I don't together. Think, I don't think Kendo is real upset about it. Yeah, decisions. exactly. It's like, I'm sorry. Uh, who? Oh, I'm sorry, Frank Thomas. I know you're upset. You yeah. Know, like, so as a fan, it's like, I do think it's kind of an even playing field, to be honest. I think there's enough guys that do, maybe aren't consistently using because they know they'll get caught eventually, but they're like using to recover from an injury or they use on the tail end of a contract just to help their legacy a little bit. Or I almost think right. that I do kind of think that's where we're at. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, again, these are all assumptions, but like, you know, a guy like it, Cano gets popped and nobody's like, Oh my gosh, we had no idea. Right. You know, I mean, and there, that's a good point. Like it, it felt like less of a surprise this time around, you know, it was just yeah. like, Ooh, ouch. Cano goes yeah. down. You know what I mean? It was like, well. And, I mean, what they do, I don't know the specifics of the Castillo one, but, like, Cano got, he got caught because they detected the masking agent in his system. That's where right. they're at now. And, like, he didn't have a medically reasonable excuse to have the masking agent in his system. So then the assumption is that he was using it to mask right. the PED. Um, I just think, I think these guys are always a step until they're not, and then they, they all get that next step ahead yeah. again. You know, I don't know. It's just... Well, like, I mean, there's crazy, like, hearing what Barry Bonds used to do, like, yeah. the way he would apply it. Yeah. Like, there's all different ways, like, you know, rubbing it on your skin or, like, eating something before the game. Yeah. It's wild. Um, I guess I kind of settled on the last question Edward asked, is like, or do you just think... So two thirds of people are using it, so you don't care anymore. And I guess I don't really care anymore. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like it used to. Like I don't know. And maybe nobody's got the like, big heads and the crazy right, muscles, right? And nobody's. You know, I mean, Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire were like physically different human beings yes. in their mid to late thirties than they were in their late twenties. Yeah. And we don't see that any, anymore. And I think that's part of the sophistication of the drugs they're using. They're not just, like, pumping up anymore. Right. It's more about recovery. Like recovery, and, yeah. That seems to be leading the... And, I don't know, man. If athletes want to recover more quickly, more power to them. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I don't think, know. I honestly think there comes a point where it's about, you know... Because I want them to play 162 right. games every year. I want to see D. Gordon run as fast as he possibly can yeah. every night. And especially if I'm flying, you know, like... Yeah. If I'm on a family vacation and I get to see him play once a year... Yeah. Give him all, give us I everything. Know. Like I want to see him yeah. break a stat cast record. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's tough. Like I, it doesn't feel like it used to. Like when I was a kid, and you'd hear about someone getting popped for steroids, it was like heartbreaking. Yeah, I mean, it was like like the McGuire stuff was like an existential crisis for me. <laughs> I know. Like it was yeah, like exactly. It was like what's real. Like you yeah. had these memories of watching these and then, games, and then and, Pluto becomes like not a planet there yeah, for a while, which was like, like your right. version of the McGuire. <laughs> Okay. What are you going to tell me next? Santa Claus is fake? Yeah. Let's <laughs> get out of here. Good question, Edward D. Yeah, thanks, Edward D. Let us know what you think. Uh, what player was the first one to break your heart? Yeah, Eddie. Should we do the other mailbag? Yeah, let's just do mailbag. All right. Trevor Bauer pitched Tuesday night, and before the first inning, he went behind the pitcher's mound and scratched with his, uh, I think with his finger, maybe. He, he scratched BD. Nine one one. What do you think that means? I wouldn't have called. I wouldn't have gotten this without help from the articles. Okay, so everyone, whoever that means, but this article comes from Deadspin, 
Mm-hmm. Everyone thought that meant Bush did 9-11, which would make him like a oh, 9-11, 9/11 truther. truther conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Um, and everyone was really upset about it, uh, obviously, for lots of reasons. <laughs> um, Bauer claims that the inscription was supposed to read BD 91.1. And then that's some secret personal joke with him and a buddy he works out with. It's a long way to get to... So this is this comes from uh, Denison Redfork. Nice. Uh, long time, first time. He sets it up and then says, um, I'm not convinced that it isn't somehow 9-11 related, perhaps a tribute to a lost family member or significant personal event surrounding the terror attack. I'd be interested to hear you guys weigh in and also deeply interested to know if you feel that such displays or actions as executed by dudes in such a public professional and capacity are wholly innocuous, perhaps distracting, at least inappropriate, or potentially unacceptable by force of rule at any points in between. Yours in Christ, Dennis and Red Fork. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this actually, now that I'm reading this out loud, it ties into the NFL's recent action yeah. to forbid uh, or define the teams of players who kneel during the National Anthem. He's saying, what's our opinion on... Athletes doing stuff like this. Right. Um, and I guess I would say... So I'm, I want to talk about Trevor Bauer in particular. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the NFL stuff, even though I'm the one that just brought it up. Yeah. But I think if... Like, if I were Trevor Bauer's manager or... I don't know what the... Like a GM... Or I don't know what the relationship is like. I think somebody needs to be like, just tell us exactly what it means. Like, convince us that it does not mean Bush did 9-11. Because if it doesn't, that's fine. You do whatever you want. Guys do stuff like that all the time. Yeah. Right? They put the number of their friend who's on a different team or got hurt or whatever, you know? Yeah. But if it if you believe that he scratched Bush did 9-11 on the mound, that's an issue. <laughs> and I think just because he, like, Why? has been, like, such a pot stirrer. Yeah, okay. I'll give you that. That it's just, like, you just have to stop doing this stuff. Like, right. you know? So this reminded me, and I actually wanted to talk about this when he had his Twitter beef with the Astros. Bauer went through arbitration this year, too. Do you know his arbitration story? No. So he wanted to submit. So in arbitration, a player submits a number they think they should get paid, and a team submits another number that they think they should get paid, and an independent arbiter d- decides who won- who wins, right? And I forget the exact number, but um, Trevor Bauer wanted to submit, like, $6,940,000. $42,000.69. So it read 69, 4, 20, oh, 69. Yeah. I did read this. And so he's just kind of like a... A kid. He's kind of a... <laughs> yeah, he's kind of a shithead. I, right. You know, he's just like... He does stupid stuff sometimes. He thinks it's funny. He ended up getting more than that and donating an exact amount that made his salary that number again. Like, right. he just really wanted to draw attention to the absurdity of it. Yeah. Um, and that's okay, but it's also like... Yeah, it's really immature, right? Yeah. I mean... So he's a specific case to me, too. Like, Right. So, I don't know. I just... I don't see any problem with athletes using the spotlight that they do have as a platform. No, I don't either. Um, so, in this case, if, is, if it isn't... If we could take the Trevor Bauer spectacle out of the equation... It's generally fine, right? Yeah, and if... I mean, that's a tough one. <laughs> Like Bush did nine one one. That's pretty bad. Nine <laughs> eleven. But I've seen a lot about this online lately with with the NFL stuff. And again, I don't really want to share. I don't really want to talk about that. But I, I just I hate that attitude that people get where it's like, okay, you get paid millions of yeah, dollars no, to I play agree. a game. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but also they sacrifice so much too. Like, well, and that almost actually to me that always gives them like a little bit more of a burden. Like their voice actually matters more, right? Right. Um. Like, you don't know if a guy in middle management in the middle of nowhere cares about police brutality or whatever the right. issue is. You do know if an NFL starting quarterback yeah. cares about it. Yeah. And I just hate that approach of, like, yeah, I agree. just shut up and, and play the game that you get paid so much for. It's like, okay, well, they're actually humans, too. Yeah. I guess I'm struggling to uh, separate the Trevor, the Trevor Bauer, Bauer thing yeah. and also the absurdity of the potential stance that he took. Did you ever see the 9-11 truther thing um, after the Super Bowl? Never think about being MVP. Investigate 9-11. A 9-11 was perpetrated by people within our own government. 
Is everybody all right? All right. Is everyone all right? All right. Our uh, device is dying, so we got to do this quick. Uh, oh, play of the week. Oh, my play of the week. What if I told you my play of the week is a defensive gem by Chicago Cubs left fielder Kyle Schwarber? I wouldn't believe you. I know, right? Yeah. I watched the play the first time. and was like, I don't know who made that play, but I loved it. And then it was like, oh, my God, that's Schwarber. And I was like, I think I have to make this my play of the week. <laughs> so they play, They were playing Cleveland, um, like the 23rd or something. Um, and Lindor was leading off. It was the first batter of the game. And he rips a ball down the left field line, like for sure double. Schwarber gets to the ball quickly slides into it and pops up like a shortstop and fires it to second and nabs him at second. Dang. It was unreal. That's awesome. I know. Great play, Kyle Schwarber. Yeah. If uh, you know how to play defense. Reluctant tip of the cap yeah. <laughs> to Kyle Schwarber. Oof. Uh, my play of the week is relief Astros. Uh, my first Astros play of the week ever. Okay. So wounds are healing. Uh, Chris <laughs> Davinsky. Coming around. Uh, it was just an awesome play and like a, listen to your, listen to your dad, you know, when you're, <laughs> when you're playing little league ball and he tells you to stick with it. This guy takes a liner off his ankle. Yeah. Chris Davinsky runs relief pitcher for the Astros. Yeah. Hits his ankle, goes like off the first base side. He runs, runs it down, but there's also traffic, you know, cause yeah. the guy running the first. So he avoids him, bare hands it and flips it for the out. Nice. That's slick. It's Good. Slick play. Uh, power rankings. Power rankings. You want me to go first? Yeah, go. All right. At number five and debut, the Seattle Mariners. You're going Mariners? Yeah. Oh, man. At number four. That's fun. And debut. their debut, the Milwaukee Brewers. Okay. Uh, at number three, Houston Astros. Okay. Probably their, their, their days of being at like four or lower are over. over. Yeah. Um, number two, I have the New York Yankees, and number one, I have the Red Sox. Like we've talked about the last couple of weeks, you can kind of just flip those around. Yeah, Red Sox have taken a little bit of a lead. They've got they're up one game right now. Um, but yes, you're right. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm shocked to not see the Braves in your top five. Yeah, you've got one NL team in your top five. I know, isn't that weird? Whew. And I'm, I'm an NL apologist. I know. I felt bad about having an NL NL teams. At five and four. Okay, I've got Braves at number five. Okay. Brewers at number four. Uh, Yankees at three. Red Sox at two. Astros at one. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Jose Altuve, did you hear about his last nine at-bats going into... It, it, this would not include the game today. He was nine for nine in his last nine he at-bats. ten for ten. Okay. Yeah. But it was like... Two run double, home run, triple, double, home run, single, single. It was insane. And this is like days after the Ringer put out this big article that was like, "Don't worry, Jose Altuve is okay," <laughs> because like his numbers haven't been where yeah. where they are where people are used to his numbers being. He's and on base he, for two hundred and thirteen hits now. Jeez, to have five consecutive two hundred hit campaigns. That's crazy. So I have him number one again. Um, love the Astros. Yeah, I'm. They're uh, they're like bullpen is shaky. I, I in fact, Tanker, if you're watching this, do you trust Ken Giles as your closer? I'm curious to hear from. Is Astros. he an Astros fan? Yeah. Okay. I'm curious to hear from Astros fans if Ken Giles is the type of closer where you like they bring him in and you're like, oh shit. Oh, well, shit, the problem shit. last October is that he was like tired, right? Right. Exactly. And so they've been managing his innings a lot better, and Davinsky's as well. It was a similar deal. But uh, Giles gave up three runs without getting an out tonight. Right. Or this afternoon. And he did that earlier in the season, and he, like, punched himself in the face when he was coming yeah. off the mound. I mean, I wouldn't trust Giles. <laughs> Giles does stupid stuff like that. Yeah, I wouldn't let him babysit my kids, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't think I'd let any Major League Baseball players <laughs> babysit Blake my Kershaw kids. Blake can babysit any time. Anything. He is a good, good, good guy. <laughs> all right. That's all we got. Cheers. Like, subscribe. <laughs>